So first up, we have uh, Ginestra Ferraro. She's from King's Digital Lab, uh, and she'll be talking today about uh, user interface design and software development, um, a troubled love story of integration. Hello, everyone. Uh, I, I struggled to hear you from there, and I'm sorry I can't be there in person. Uh, as Georgina said, I'm Ginestra Ferraro. I'm a UI UX designer at King's Digital Lab at King's College London. And today I will be talk about the troubled love story of integration when it comes to a designer trying to make their way into software development. So this is what I will, sorry, slight issues. This is what I will talk about in the next 20 minutes. Uh, so who I am and what I do, what is the problem I'm trying to solve, how the issue is being investigated, what is the proposed solution where are we at, also known as the progress in, context, in the context of King's Digital Lab specifically, so successes and challenges, what's left to do a lot, and how the RSC community can help and benefit from this. So these are some um, inspirational quotes, um, a reminder of why teamwork is worth it. And my favorite is the first one, uh, which is an African proverb that says, if you wanna go fast, go alone. If you wanna go far, go together. Why do I like it? Because it doesn't only tell you the good part, the going far, uh, but it also tells you that you can indeed go alone and you might go faster if you do so. So you have to make a conscious choice between past and far. I could also mention the Gestalt principle, the whole is other than the sum of the parts which is about how the mind perceive objects through the eye and how it can complete shapes and sceneries even when parts are missing. So this is a brief background story about myself. So I'm originally from Italy where I studied graphic design, photography and advertising. I fell in love with the web while I'm working as an art director on ad campaigns in Milan. So I decided to learn the basics of front-end development um, I still consider myself a designer. I moved to London and found my way back into academia by accident. Um, I didn't know what digital humanity, humanities was when I interviewed for the role of research developer at King's. And if I'm being honest, I'm still struggling uh, to find a convincing definition of what DH is to this date. In 2015, uh, King's Digital Lab was established uh, to focus on software development and design practices in research contexts and detached from teaching. So we are a pure research and development unit, if you wish. I had the opportunity to complete a master in computer science, but I remain a designer at core. And finally, I am a Sustainability Software Institute fellow since last year and a co-organizer of London Web Standards and State of the Browser and by the way, State of the Browser Conference is happening in London this October. If you're interested, check it out. So what is the problem? Uh, as I observed it uh, as a UI UX designer uh, while creating products that enhance research findings in the fields of DH and tangent uh, fields like cultural heritage and social sciences, it has mostly to do with the challenges of synchronizing parallel workflows the RSC and the UI UX ones specifically. In theory, it doesn't look difficult. Both are established in their fields. Uh, both have recognizable roles, but they diverge on the definition of design. It's fuzzy and broad. That said, I believe both are able to recognize how they are dependent on each other. A good design means nothing if the, te the technology doesn't work and, and the performance software can't serve its purpose if, it, if users can't adopt it. So how can we make these workflows less parallel or more integrated? Can design be integrated in RSE workflows and not just added on top of it? Can design roles also be RSE roles and not just designer, but also analysts, project managers, and so on? So what I have observed when the and when did these, these issues recurred, because both workflows, workflows were um, iterative, which is good, but also parallel, they hardly were aware of each other, which meant syncing was only handled by the actors at place, designer and developer mainly, communicating. So non-structured communication, as good as, as, good as it is, um, it's incredibly well tailored to the project. It lacks consistency. 
So the result is that if dependencies are not exposed, sinking milestones becomes tricky. Bottlenecks happen, which leads to frustration, and there you have it, efficiency is lost. The reasons why the integration between workflows can fail are many. Some are related to staff availability, which could result in an, in an even workload distribution, which could also lead to excessive compromise in order to meet deadlines and remain on budget, which lead to more, frustra more frustration and so on. Also, lack of inclusive planning could lead to similar issues and dependencies again, uh, when a role needs another and so on. If unless they're aware that they need another, they might lose synchronization. So what can we do better? I called it proposed solution in the table of contents, but I am a bit uncomfortable with that considering we're still at the stage of testing. So it's still called a plan. Um, these are some of the things that are happening to collect more information of what is happening elsewhere to avoid working in silos and reinventing the wheel, at least not too many times. We know there can be better wheels, but still. Among other things, I've been asked to provide feedback on the AHRC Digital Software Needs Report by the Software Sust Sustainability Software Institute, which means there will be comments on UI UX design needs. You may have seen the RSE leaders work on collecting information about RSE groups in the UK and looking at different roles and role definitions. This work may lead towards job titles that are more easily recognizable across institutions and the industry. Uh, so if you take my full job title, for instance, Senior Research Software UI UX Designer, it is a mouthful and I'm not sure everyone would interpret what I do in the same way we initially intended it to be. So to finish off on the state of things, I'm planning to have a case study to showcase the new integrated approach by the end of my funded period as an SSI fellow in March next year. So the last point there was on the to-do list was a case study. I am in fact working already on a case study, but this is a test trial. So I left the other on the, the to-do list. So, um, so I've been able to observe a lot of improvements. So the quality of the design has improved, including making it more accessible. The satisfaction of project partners grows as they feel more included in the process and are able to follow what's happening at every stage. Team members feel like working less in isolation and part of creating the tool. What I've still struggled with, and I'm not sure it has been tackled efficiently, is documenting the process. There are a couple of issues related to observing and overcoming this problem that go back to what, in, what I mentioned initially, that and it probably needs the feedback to top management um, and its resource availability. If there is not enough manpower to do the job, there will always be a compromise on quality. It's a bit of a chicken and egg situation. In order to have stakeholders buy into what your, your suggested improvements, you are simulated what you could do if without the actual if. On the last point of reusable co components, I don't feel comfortable saying they are bulletproof until they stand the test of time. We have seen too many frameworks claiming they will be around forever and not lasting past the toddler phase. Finally, these are some of the expected outputs of this work to ensure it grows. It includes more labs with the different experiences to make it more flexible, more inclusive and accommodate a wide range of needs. So the collaborative toolkit will be available on GitHub, more people will be able to contribute and it will be open source. And hopefully people will improve it depending on how they will use it. Training sessions uh, slash workshop, depending on availability to test uh, the workflow and see if the roles in other, um, uh, in other units will reflect what we have done in, in KDL. And finally, the usual paper publications and the academic way. So my conclusion, in the abstract, I stated that the workflow integration is a wide RSE problem affecting digital humanities. I have to be honest, this claim was, only, was true only to, be, to a certain extent. It has to do with what I was able to observe in my day-to-day -day work. Um, and I mainly work in digital humanities and tangent fields. 
the more I chatted with other designers in research and development environments, the more I discovered they were having similar issues. What I would say from a, the, though is that digital humanities possibly because of that fuzzy definition of what actually is, benefits from a diversity of backgrounds and intents, as you will see in Jake, Neil Jakesman presentation on Thursday on research themes, that makes it even more difficult to establish sustainable and repeatable processes. They can become either so high level that border with fully theoret theoretical thinking, uh, that they can, and, or they require heavy tailoring uh, when adopted or rather adapted uh, for new projects. In KDL, we're continuing to experiment, focusing on reusable components, both when designing and when developing. Hopefully, this approach will allow us to create meaningful libraries, libraries that more people can experiment with and improve. Resilience is good and bad at the same time in these situations. On the one hand, we, there is us modifying something with a sole belief that we can make it better. On the other hand, uh, there is something that has been around for so long to make it feel comfortable to so many. And it's now considered, what is now considered bad practice practice keeps cre creeping in, creeping back in. So while I believe the full stack developers are unicorns, and you can ask me that about later, um, I do believe that the power of communicating well and trusting every actor in, in the play tries their best. So everyone has a meaningful role. Integration is the only way forward because far is better than fast. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Janestra. I we'll, think I've we'll, run yeah. through my slides really fast. Yeah, you've left Sorry. a lot of nice time for questions. We'll put the Slido code back on the screen. The first question oh, is, yeah. could you expand a bit about the interaction between UI, UX design and software design more generally? Um, it says, I think most RSCs will be more familiar with the latter. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so with, um, I think that it's, it, it's just the definition of it, that it's probably already happening for every RSC developer. It's just the definition of design. As I said, it's quite broad. So we overlap sometimes. And even when designing software, these things happen. It's just that in particularly in a research context, um, a UI UX designer starts uh, before the product is created. Uh, it has to research what is already existing, what the needs of the users are, and how to best approach, approach them. And if there are already models, practices, they are tackling a similar problem and it's, are transferable to this one. So while a UI UX um, process would start with user research, uh, the development might start with the technologies and what's available. Uh, they're not uh, independent. They could talk to each other even then. And, you know, if a technology is not accessible to the pool of users that you will be talking to, for instance, uh, it could be already an issue. So uh, this is where the integration could become essential at the beginning. And at every step of the way, it, it should be like that. So the integration is finding out where the point of contacts should be. So they will not run in parallel anymore. They will be intertwined and aware on when they need one another. So if, if a, deni a designer wants to test a component and needs some interaction, they might need a developer to help with that or real data to figure out if the, if the way they're presenting it, it's understandable to the user or the researchers because sometimes users are the researchers themselves. I hope these answer your question. Yeah, thank you. Um... The next one, I guess, is linked to that, is what is something that RSCs could do differently in their general workflow to incorporate or facilitate better design slash UI slash UX practices? That's a good question. Um, I think sometimes explaining what they expect uh, the design to do for them, it's helpful and what they are developing and how they expect it to work. Uh, it's also useful to a designer, designer. So I guess it goes back to communication, um, but establishing a channel for communication so that it can happen naturally, it's what's missing. 
so I think it goes both ways uh, in a way. Um, I find personally, I find it very useful when a, when a developer explains the technology to me. Um, it's it's not necessarily um, it's not necessary to the design itself, but it helps me reason and trying to get more um, to anticipate what the developer could do. So I guess it's also a bit personal. Do you think it would be um, better to consider more of the UI UX work at the beginning of the project? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, it, from my point of view, it should be one of the first thing, even, and, and this is some experience that we have in, in King Siege, the lab. At feasibility time, when we uh, evaluate pro, pro, projects that could come our way or that we've been asked to collaborate with, we, uh, to me, it was, uh, it was something new that we introduced to have a designer comment on it alongside with the developer and an analyst. Uh, all the roles were equally important to figure, to trying to anticipate the challenges uh, of the project and whether they were feasible or even um, thinking about how much resources it would need. Uh, so a designer doesn't have to fit in to the box that someone else has set up for them. They are able to set their own space before the project starts. So the Sorry. So the next question is, do you envisage more developers doing design or more designers doing development? Oh, that's good. That goes back to the full stack, full stack developers being unicorns. I don't believe full stack developers really exist. I apologize to anyone who self-defined themselves as full stack. I think that the complexity of development and design nowadays in, uh, in software development is quite high. Uh, and being really good at both, it's, it's a myth. You will have to compromise. Um, I think that obviously will, that there will be an overlap and passion comes into place. Pa passion, interest, skills come into play. Um, so obviously someone who's interested, a developer who's interested in design will bleed into designing things. But the designer who's interested in development will design in a different way to include more development for their work. Um, it's, it very much comes down to skills. Uh, as long as anyone is clear on what their core is and what, where their strengths are and knowing where you need help, uh, it really gonna define your role. Okay, one final question. Um, which web frameworks or UI libraries do you use and what considerations other than longevity are important? Uh, so we have debated this um, and we continue to debate it in, uh, in KDL. We are using Bootstrap at the moment uh, as a framework. We have used Foundation Zerp. Um, we used and are using BOMA, which is a CSS framework, uh, which is more lightweight, but it comes with other issues. Uh, we keep saying that we are not married to any as long as it works for us. And we are uh, trying to figure out how to tailor different level of complexities that we need, because these frameworks tend to become bloated quite quickly. Um, so there are some projects that also don't use any frameworks. Great, thank you. Um, let's thank Janestra and for all your, your you. great questions.